All right, Shadowan. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, and all glory due to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to our apostles and our elders for great most of them that rule well, and peace and salutations and many blessings to you, like that. I'm kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. Um, just wanted to make a quick announcement before um, the official video starts. Just wanted to put it out there because I forgot to mention it on the video that when we celebrate the Passover, when it talks about to, to slit, slit the throat of a lamb, you know, do the certain preparations that we had to do back then, you know, it doesn't physically mean you have to go somewhere and grab a lamb and cut his throat and burn it in fire. You know, with us being in captivity, we got to do the best we can do. You know, some brothers get lamb chops or whatever the case is, but um, it was just on my spirit to bring this out and lay it out on the table before the video starts, you know, shout out. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And peace and salutations and many blessings to the elect Akiam, the house of David, kicking this word in sincerity and truth in these last days. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp. And it was just on my spirit to, uh, you know, read this whole chapter of Exodus 12. And I mean, Lord willing, I'll be able to get, ugh, I mean, looking at how long it is, we'll see if I get to the end of it. It was just a, a few points I wanted to extract from it, because as you go into Exodus, the 12th chapter, this goes into the Passover and the Lord establishing the Passover and what it consists of and the things that we have to do. All right. Now, just because this 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 was thousands of years ago doesn't mean that we don't have to apply this to this day, because as you read it, this is something that was supposed to be carried on from generation to generation to generation now we know there was a point of time where the lord had stopped dealing with us all right because of course we went a whoring after other gods so he had stripped a lot of our customs away from us okay and now we're getting back into that okay and as we're approaching the passover right now we need to be in this spirit okay Especially when we see all these things coming to pass, just like the spirit of the Lord, just like the Lord overthrew Egypt, he's going to overthrow Egypt again. All right. Spiritually, we know that to be a mystery Babylon or Assyria or America, which is all of those name, all of pretty much all of those lands. All right. America's all those just in one big lump sum. And we got to understand and truly believe that the same plagues, the same things that had happened to ancient Egypt back then, the same thing's going to happen over here in America. Really, it's going to be worse because the scriptures talk about a time that wasn't to come. All right. So we've experienced all these different persecutions. We've experienced being delivered from certain places that we were held captive at. But we have it. We haven't experienced nothing in that in that criteria as Dan of the 12th chapter talked about yet. We just know it's going to come. But this is how we prep ourselves. OK, and this is what we're supposed to be doing. All right. Fleeing from this place spiritually, mentally. And then that's going to bring on the physical deliverance. OK, but um, without further ado, I'm going to read a few verses here in Exodus, the 12th chapter. And Lord willing, what I'm going to title this is um, is um, mark your doorposts. OK, and uh, we'll go into that title here in a little bit. I'm going to read it, and then once we get to that point through the spirit, you know, and further break it down. But there's a few things that I wanted to bring out going into Exodus 12th, a 12th chapter. So Lord willing, let's edify. So Exodus 12 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. And of course, when you go into that word Egypt, it's really just a, a Greek word that means bondage. The correct way to pronounce it would be um, Matazarium. Well, it'll say uh, Mitzrayim within the scriptures, but in the ancient in the ancient Hebrews pronounced Matazarium. OK, but that's what Egypt is. It means some double straits or house of bondage. OK, saying this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. OK, now I want to pause on that really quick just because um, as we're approaching um, Thursday, which is tomorrow, because today is um, today is Wednesday right now, um, February, February 21st. So uh, once we go to um, sundown Thursday, that starts the that starts the Shabbat, the seventh day. The new moon had kicked in. The new moon had kicked in last week on Thursday, and that actually started the month Abib, which is the first month, which actually means um, pretty much being fresh and everything's new. And just a, as a footnote, um, down here the past three four days, 
it's been raining really hard down here, which is spiritual because it shows you that this is the beginning of the year, because the beginning of the year is when it starts raining a lot. That way, all the seeds that you planted, everything that you had planted pretty much um, gets gets nutrients out of the water. And then around the first 40 days or so, when the time of the harvest is the harvest of the fresh, uh, you know, the fresh fruits is pretty much um, the first fruits. Those those plants will begin to bud up. All right. Which is where you get Pentecost from. OK, but um, as you go, I'm sorry, it was 50. It's 50 days. But um, it's just spiritual seeing all the rain right now. It shows you like wintertime is really ending technically. OK, but then again, now it's just a footnote. But right now that this marks the beginning of the months, the last Sabbath that we just had the new moon that marked the beginning of the months. All right. In 14 days, which is two weeks afterward, sundown, which will make it the 15th day is going to carry into the Pesach or the Passover. OK. So verse three says, speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying in the 10th day of this month, they shall take them to them. Every man, a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb of an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of his souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your account for the lamb. OK, now um, and we read this when we have the Passover service and we're supposed to, because, again, this goes into our deliverance out of Egypt. And as you can watch um, a video that um, the elder Monaghan and the rest of the elders and the brothers out there in um, D.C., they had actually done a video reciting this in the Hebrew. Lord willing, I'll post this. I believe it's an older video. Lord willing, I'll post it within a description box so you brothers can um, can watch it. But it's those brothers going over this chapter in the ancient Hebrew. OK, but pretty much what this is going into um, that you got to get a lamb, you know, to make sure you have a lamb on the 10th day. And if your house is small, if it's a neighboring house by you, that might be a little smaller, too. Y'all are going to share and y'all are going to um, y'all are going to celebrate the Passover together. OK, and it'll continue to go into it. All right. It says verse four. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to him, his house, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats. OK, now that part there is spiritual, because once you go into this, you got to take the spiritual meaning out of all of this. OK, now we know that Yahweh was a sacrificial lamb. OK, he was that lamb that was without blemish. Mm -hmm. That was that, that was that was taken from us. All right. But he was that sacrifice that atoned for all of our all of our sins, because even when you go into the law, whenever we commit iniquity, what do we have to do? We have to mm -hmm. sacrifice, whether it be a turtle dove, whether it be a bullock, whether it be an ox, whether it be a sheep, whether it be a goat. We have to sacrifice that animal to atone for our sins. Now, Yahweh had done that ultimately. And it's even spiritual when he was actually that lamb on the day of the Passover that was delivered up and that was slain. OK, because that had happened on the Passover. OK, now. Think about it as well. Spiritually, we represent those lambs too, not on a mad, mad not on a mass sense as Yahweh Shai, because his 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 sin, not uh, not sins, but his blood atoned for all of Israel's sins. All right, mainly the elects, but even all of Israel are going to be right in the kingdom. All right, but on a my, um, uh, smaller scale, which isn't really small, but we have to be without blemish too. All right, where are the lambs as well? We're sheep. As Yahweh Shai had quoted, my sheep hear my voice. So were those sheep as well. And just like Yahweh Shai was that sheep that was given up to the sacrifice, we make ourselves we make ourselves that sacrifice daily. We place ourselves on the altar once we do these videos, get on the highways and byways, we're put out there, we're chastised in front of men, we're chastised by the Lord. All right. We're making our bodies as that living sacrifice, atoning for the things that we've done as well to make sure that we are worthy to receive the kingdom. OK, this is verse six. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day in the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take the blood and strike on the two side posts on the upper posts of the houses wherein they shall eat. All right. So those lamb that you have, you have to um, you got to take the blood of it and you got to put the blood on the side posts. OK, now I'm going to go into that a little more. Let me see here. Let me jump down. Let's see here. Give me one sec, Baba Kasha. Let 
Let's see here. Okay, there we go. Now, what I want to do is I want to jump down to the key point. And if you want to read the whole chapter, absolutely. And brothers already know within the Passover, we recite this anyway. But this was the key point. But just wanted to go over a few things within the Passover and what we have to do. Okay. But this is going into that point where it said we had to dip the blood of the lamb and, and, and wipe our doorposts. So this goes into it with more detail once you read Exodus 12 and 21 and 22. All right. It says, Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. OK, and he shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin. Now, when you go into this word hyssop, give me one sec, Baba Kasha. That word there is pronounced. I to the OK. And it says hyssop, a plant used for medicinal and religious purposes. OK, so that's what hyssop is. It's a plant. That you would dip within the blood. Okay. So it says. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop. And dip it in the blood. That is in the basin. And strike the lintel. In the two side posts. Which is your doorway. Okay. With the blood. That is in the basin. And none of you shall go out the door. Of his house. Until the morning. Okay. And until the destruction is passed. Pretty much. For the Lord will pass through. And smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel. And on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your house and smite you. Now, there's two things that I want to go into within this lesson. And the first thing is going to be that blood upon the lentils that we had to put that we had to put in our doorposts in ancient Egypt. OK, because it said it says for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. OK, now spiritually, that's going into these people that you see out here. These Edomites mainly are oppressors. OK, but that's also our people that ain't in the right state of mind. You know, of course, we know that we were Egyptians before we were converted to the truth. We we're Israelites. But, you know, we were under this American, Egyptian, Babylonian, Hermetic philosophy. OK, but he says a spirit of the Lord passed through and smite the Egyptians. And that's going to happen all over again. Contrary to popular belief, the spirit of the Lord is going to smite these these other nations that's out here. And if you don't have that blood on your doorpost, he's going to smite you, too. Because when you go into that spiritually, that's talking about your mind. OK, the blood of Yahweh needs to be on your mind. Yahweh needs to be on our mind 24 seven. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Now, really quick, because I got to go to work here in a minute. But um, there's something I want to pull up in Psalms 51st chapter really quick. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. This is Psalms 51 and seven. And it says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. So this is King David that's making a prayer after he had went off. And he's asking the Lord, Yahweh Shai, to purge him with hyssop. Okay? Which shows that it's a mental thing. Alright, you gotta be washed clean by the blood of Yahweh Shai. And that lintel that's talking about your head. So I'm gonna jump back to where I left off at just to prove that. And um, let's see here. Just to prove that. In Exodus, the 12th chapter, where I left off at, when you go into that word lentil, because this is going back into it, all right, King David said, purge me with hyssop, and it says, and you shall take a bunch of, a bunch of hyssop and dip the blood, and, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lentil. That word lentil is, um, masha, masha kwarap. Kwawap, okay, Masha Kwawap, and it means lentil door. And when you go into the um, the the, the um, you know the origins of the etymology, it says to overlook, to look down or out, overhang, look out or down. Okay, so to overlook, you have to be in a higher position to overlook something, and that's where your head rests. That's where your mind rests. It's over the rest of your body. Okay, that's the highest part of your body is your head. So you got to make sure that's purged. Because also that's where your spirit dwells is in your head. OK, so we got to make sure through much prayer and fasting that we have the blood of Yahweh Shai on our doorpost. So we won't be destroyed by the destroyer when the new Passover comes, when the spirit of the Lord passes over this Egypt with his chariots. OK, and those nuclear missiles. Now that goes into the second part that I wanted to bring up within this um, within this verse, because he mentions the destroyer in verse twenty three. And when you go into it, that was the spirit of death 
that had passed over ancient Egypt and killed those firstborn. Now, that destroyer is actually Yahawashai. And just like he had destroyed those firstborn of those Egyptians back then, well, really, he was upon them within the plagues, you know, but he had came, he had came within that last plague and killed mass people, you know. And again, you see the plagues happening right now. You see animals are dying. All right. You see there's pestilence all over the place. There's flus, diseases. People are dying left and right. Those are those plagues that had hit ancient Egypt. They're happening in a more in, in a more vast manner over here in America. And just to show that's the spirit of Yahweh Shai. And I'm going to end it off on this because I got a clock in here soon. But uh, I want to go to first. Uh, actually, let's see here. This is Jeremiah chapter four, verse seven. And it reads, the lion has come out of his thicket. The destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He has gone forth forth from his place to make thy land desolate and thy cities shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. So that's going into Yahweh and that's what he's going to do. That's why it says for gird you with sackcloth, lamenting how. And when it says lamenting how, that's what we're on the fire. That's what we're, what we're doing on the highways and byways, crying aloud and sparing not and lifting our voice as that trumpet. All right. We're lamenting and we're howling for the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back from us. OK, so Yahweh Shai is coming in that spirit of the destroyer, just like back in ancient Egypt. OK, he's going to do it all over again. And you can read that in the book of Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, where you can actually read about Yahweh Shai coming back to recompense the Edomites. OK, and it goes into it. All right. And I'm actually going to um, read one more. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, that's pretty much it on that one. But again, you can read the 12th chapter whenever you get your own time. Just wanted to go into that. Lord, when it was edifying. But again, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory due to Yahweh by Shimmy Habashai. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of great millstone that rule well. And peace and salutations and many blessings to the elect Akiam, the house of David, kicking his word of sincerity and in truth. Shalom.